Good morning. Happy Saturday. And daylight savings time tonight. We'll all get to lose an hour of sleep, just what we all need, right? Well, hope you're doing good. Good morning, Lynn. Uh, <clears throat> we are on our fourth session of the color theory, and we will be working to this um, today with our first block that we're going to sew. So I'm really looking forward to that. Hi, Noella. And so this is going to be uh, both a uh, sewing technique class as well as continuing our color theory. So as you're coming on, I would like to say to you that if you have questions or if you there was something that you didn't quite understand that I'm, I'm telling you or talking about or something that you know in terms of color theory, then I would like you to ask those questions in the chat box because at the end of the show, I'll go back to the chat, bo chat box and check on those and we'll find out where, where we are and this whole color theory. Uh, one of the questions that was asked uh, was, how do we know if we don't have a pattern and we're working, you know, kind of blindly and that's what you're doing here because I want you to concentrate and, and I could be wrong in doing it this way, but it's a, once you get work your way through it, it makes a little bit more sense. And at least that's what others have told me in classes that I've taught. So, to concentrate on learning the color theory and learning how to pick out fabrics for particular blocks or particular styles. And, but the question was, how do we know they're all going to fit together? And I want to talk a little bit about that uh, right here at the, at the top of the show. And that is, we have looked at a theme fabric we have chosen fabrics that work with that theme. We have talked about value. So in your palette, you should have, you know, a number of light fabrics, a number of medium, and a number of dark, and hopefully you've got some medium lights and medium darks. And if all of those fabrics, when you lay them out together and look at them and take uh, pictures and take that to grayscale and they all look good and you have choices between your lights, your mediums and darks, then once that quilt is done, they're all going to look wonderful and it's, it's kind of like a sampler quilt. And that's really what we're making is a sampler quilt of the things that we've learned in this class. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense to you in terms of the, the palette. And the other question that was asked was, are we going to be using the theme fabric for a border or whatever? The answer is that depends on your design at the end of the quilt. And so, sometimes a theme fabric that's all it is it gives you a theme to follow of colors and a color way and you may never use that theme fabric in the quilt but yes you could use that as a border if you were fortunate enough to find more of that uh, border fabric absolutely and there's other ways that we'll talk about when we get to that point of putting everything together and designing the quilt uh, and you're going to be doing the designing uh, not me I you certainly can follow what I do or what others do with the pictures that you see but that's not um, you won't have I I'm not going to send you a pattern we're going to work on that together so I think that's the exciting part so today we're going to talk about monochromatic which is one fabric that with all the different tints and tones and shades so you know we talked a little bit last week about things that inspire us and things that we can pull from from other places to get color palettes if we're still feeling a little you know i i don't think i can just walk into a quilt store and all of a sudden have a whole 
um, palette of fabrics and make this quilt, especially like a sampler quilt where there's maybe lots of fabrics to it. So I want to take us back a little bit and pull this in. And I want to go back to nature. Let's start with, with nature. And I'm going to drop you down to um, the table for just a second. So I'm going to go back to some pictures, magazines. Um, I, I'm not a very good picture taker. And so I don't have a ton of pictures of places that we go and things that we do. Uh, you know, in terms of vacation or trips that we take. And unfortunately, um, I'm sorry about that for my own sake um, and family because I don't take those pictures. But I see in magazines. Now, if you were going to go with a monochromatic green, I think this picture of this walkway in someone's home is an absolute treasure trove for that because you have everything from the very lights to almost looking uh, white in a sense or very, very pale to all the way to the very deepest darks here. And you can see that all of these work beautifully together and this is a monochromatic uh, yard. Uh, side yard or what or whatever this particular um, and I didn't you know until I saw this magazine I didn't even know there was a thing a, such a thing as a black calla but uh, these black calla lilies over here so the green is is so dark that it almost looks black then sticking with the green theme this is a pile of vegetables and so everything with all with a little uh, salamander in there. I think that's what that is in the middle of, of this bunch. But fruits and vegetables all in the green families. And you can see what an amazing array of color this is. And, and I know that the um, some of these that are sliced almost look white um, on the camera. But they're, you know, the palest green of a cucumber, a lime. Um, and then, of course, I, I showed you the paint samples. That gives you another and all the succulents here. I, I looked at the succulents in my yard and, and I was astonished at all the array of greens that are in even one succulent plant. But now that's, you know, that's plants. But then we go to this picture and it's a picture of a rose. And it's out of my David Austin um, rose catalog that, that I get. But I loved this picture and I and worked with it with some different things, um, doing some thread painting and playing with it. Because in here, in this salmon color or peachy color of this rose, is all the way from the very light to the very, very darkest in the center of that rose. And so nature in and of itself gives you such a such an incredible palette to work with. So monochromatic. I want to go back and talk a little bit more about just using a monochromatic color palette. And we're going to be using our three-in-one tool. So if you want to grab your three-in-one tool, that would be um, terrific because then you can look along with me as we go through this. So um, one of those, one of the places where you can be inspired is nature, magazines, um, home decor places, stores, um, any you know pictures that you've taken from anywhere. And there's there's um, photo apps and things like that that you can get on your phone or your computer that will take a picture and pull out um, like you know a, a color palette from that for you and sometimes they they have four or five you know colors from a picture that they'll pull so there's there's many things that you can look for but one of the things about monochromatic is that um, what's key to making an exciting quilt that is monochromatic is really about the fabric contrast and scale so contrast is again the lightness and the darkness so how dark your fabrics go how light they go and how well you can see that contrast between the fabrics and where you place them in your block. Then the other thing is the scale of print. 
Um, I want to show you a little bit of a scale with some of the fabrics that we got in our, our booklet or our kit. I don't know why I said booklet. But we have large scale where when you cut this up into small pieces, you aren't going to get that whole flower. And if we go back to our three-in-one tool, you can see that um, we can get something like that. We can we can pull, and if we're just cutting randomly, it may look like this in in circles, in triangles. You're going to get something. You know, you're going to get something different. Um, you can fussy cut, um, but again, those large scale. Each time you cut, if you're working with two and a half, three inches, you're not going to get um, the whole the whole. Um, picture so you need to think about scale and sometimes that large scale is exactly what you want little surprises of whatever that motif or pattern is going to be then you've got some medium you know scale and this is where you know not everyone is going to look the same but they're going to be pretty similar and you know and this one has lines in it this one has polka dots and a little bit different which is very eye-catching and keeps you moving across the quilt um, with that movement and texture. Then this one um, has scale and but it has more texture with that you know the the rough looking paint the the different colors and how they move and you're not you really aren't going to get the same um, you're not going to get the words in every block. You're you're not going to get the pink rough in every block. It's going to add some some wonderful texture to your quilt. And then a medium small scale it's going to be pretty much the same. Uh, it's going to be a, there's going to be some differences depending on what the pattern is. Then you have stripes which add a different kind of movement and a calmness to a quilt. Um, so the stripes can, you know, go um, any which way that that you desire them um, to go or you know off centered which is a totally different effect um, on that and then something that's small scale that reads um, solid so contrast and um, scale are really key ingredients to give you what you're looking for in a monochromatic quilt. Um, the overall, we're only going to make one block, so we can't visualize necessarily all the different textures and scale in that. So, but the other key ingredient, again, as I said, value plays a really important role, and that is in a monochromatic quilt, you need to use a very wide range of, of value in, in your quilt as well and a neutral can be anything that has in a monochromatic quilt that has the color that you're working in it can either be white off-white uh, you know your your tans but a, a, a neutral in a monochromatic quilt can also be a very light fabric that has just a, a bit of the main color in it. So let's go back to the green. If you're going to make a green monochromatic quilt, then that neutral can be a, a very um, light green or dark. It, it, you know, it depends on how you want to see that as neutral. And then you can use that for a neutral if it has some of that green in it. All right, and um, so when we're putting our blocks together, we're gonna to be using an element of, you know, that value and texture and all that good stuff. So let's, um, I'm just, I peeked over here and right now I see Brenda says my three-in-one tool doesn't have the card with the cutouts you're using. Um, okay, that means that the newer one, they didn't, 
include that. So what I would do is I would get a piece of cardstock and draw a, you know, a square, a circle, a rectangle, possibly in different sizes, and then you make your own tool with that because I think they're very helpful when we go into a store because if we want a particular look, sometimes a fabric that we may like may, may be wonderful, but it doesn't quite give the effect that we want. So if you do not have the, um, the, the shapes at the back of your three-in-one tool, uh, go ahead and create your own. And it's, it's really not hard to do and use them you know, a scissors or something um, to cut those to cut those with. So today we're going to be working with the pattern. So if you have your pattern book, go down to uh, pattern number 91, Star of Hope. And so you have your simply line drawing you have your values that you've placed in there and how many you know different values you're going to use then it's broken it apart into what you need to cut and so they've labeled each one of the pieces with a letter of the alphabet and then you have a colored version of that block on the top then here and so they're giving you the A, B, C, D, E um, pieces that you're going to need in your block. And depending upon what size of block you're going to be making, and here you have the options of 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. And I'm going to be working with blocks that can be divisible by 3. So all of the blocks will be in this format. And if you were to... Uh, look at this first block you can see that it is a three grid and it even tells you at the top there's um, one two and three grids across uh, so whatever you make would be within those so it's it's basically like a nine patch uh, with the, your three grids across and so we're going to be working in the three the three inch the three grid um, for this um, quilt so that it's easy to put it together and work with the math so then you can go down and find out how many of each that you need to cut and then it will give you if you need to um, cut it again for any reason like here they they cut it in half and they cut it uh, on the diagonal twice and for each block they give you the size that you need to cut it to now there's a there's a couple of things that when I look at a block and I look at how they're going to assemble it and I can tell they don't necessarily give you a ton of information down here in terms of assembling the the block it's pretty much right in here where it talks about the assembly and I and the way I say talk about it it shows a picture so that you can follow it easily for that and so I see that they're cutting and they want me to use all of these triangles that are in this quilt which are in each of these blocks there's two small ones and a large one in the block and they're they're having me sew them together individually now if I was making a whole quilt I may decide to do that differently but I'm for for the sake of this quilt I'm only making one so it makes very good sense and saving fabric for me to to um, do the diagonal twice uh, uh, the cutting of that or um, a half square triangle so I I see that option and I'm going to go with that uh, option in this particular for this particular block um, anyway so I am I'm choosing to go with the nine inch for these blocks and most of my blocks will be nine inch on you know on my quilt I may pop one block or something simply because of the way um, it looks that I might want it bigger because I'm going to do some fill in and I'm going to share that with you in a minute. So I have cut four squares of 
the A fabric, which is the corners, at three and a half inches. And, you know, one of the um, squares for the B fabric, which is that triangle in each of the side blocks. And again, it tells me to cut that at four and a fourth and give, cut it on the diagonal twice and so on. So that's how that pattern is read. And we're gonna look at that. I have chosen um, to use blue as my monochromatic. And I have sewn part of it together and we'll show you how um, the sewing of that uh, works here in a moment. And so this is dramatic, and for me the drama is in these, you know, the blocks and the, the star overlapping the other star. So it looks like this, what's green in your book, overlaps that purple one. And so to make that star almost look like it's, it's spinning in, in terms of that. And so I basically liked the way that, you know, that happened in that block. So I went with what they did and I stuck with the dark and the medium and the light. And so I went, this is where you would go to your um, three in one tool and whatever color that you would choose so let's say you wanted to go back and stick with that, that green. Then how the monochromatic uh, would work in this case is here on your three-in-one tool, you have a pure, and that would be, uh, you know, green. So here is the green in its purity. So now how do I work with, you know, my different values on this? Well, here are all your tints. So now you can find something that contrasts well with this color. And I would probably stick down here. And so here you have your lights or if you were going to, you want contrast. And so over here in the tones, you have some contrast here, but it's not as dramatic uh, to pull out that spinning star in the center as these are. Then over here, you have your shades. So when I look at this and I wanna go to the darkest shade or a very strong um, value in here, I'm probably going to stick up a stick up in here, um, possibly over there, and then for that medium color, you know, here is where I get my tones, my greens and grays, and my, you know, the the um, shade plus gray over here, and or a tone. I will have my tones. Um, which is t which is a tint with gray added to it. So anywhere along the scale, I'm looking for contrast, and I can go to my stash and I can use this to to get what I was looking for. Um, you know, in terms of medium, and I wanted strong um, visual differences in this. So for my background, I used a very very light cerulean blue is the um, color that, that I chose from the three-in-one tool. And if I were to go back to that cerulean blue, and now I have to find it. And I look at the back of my card, I'm not told a whole ton. I'm simply told right here that cerulean blue is blue. But now I can go into that cerulean blue card, and I, which is number 10, and I have number 10. The 10 is right there. And I can pull whatever I need to from that card to get my monochromatic um, palette. So... 
I wanted strong, so I went with a very deep value, my medium value, and my light value. And to give this that sense of spinning and movement, I chose this particular fabric with these circles in it because it gave it a little bit of, of spark and, uh, you know, worked with it from, from that perspective. And I see a question. Um, I get distracted easily with that. It says, can, um, on the D fabric, can we cut it at four inches and trim it down? The answer is, you really need it at the three and seven eighths so that once you've sewn the C and the B together, they fit. And so I would say in this regard, probably not because you're simply cutting that D fabric in half so that it will fit in. And as we sew, hopefully that can become a little bit clearer for you. So I have my parts that I that I've used. So I, I cut four of my light backgrounds and I cut the um, the light part of the block which is the B. So I cut the B and on the B blocks you were cut diagonally twice. And what works really nice for this is that your outside edges now um, you know you've got some you've got bias that's that's going on in here and that you want to be you really want to be careful with um, with the bias and so we really don't want to pull or stretch this fabric and then with the C I've done the same thing I cut my my square and then I cut it on the diagonal twice and then the one that she was just talking about the D fabric I cut it at three and seven eighths and I cut that from point to point. Now when you're cutting point to point, I wanna point out something. I'm gonna grab a, a square here, and this ruler may not quite be long enough, but one of the things that, that I really um, want to work hard at is that your blade of your rotary cutter has a little bit of width to it. So you don't want it exactly on that point. You want it just a blade apart of that. So when you're cutting, um, you want it almost to the point, but not exactly um, to, that, to that point. And I use my 45 degree angle along that center part so that I know. And I also, do not sit down and cut. I stand because I have a better view when I cut that way. Because on sitting here and looking, I think that I have my ruler correct. But when I looked up at my camera, um, hopefully you can see that I'm over that tip and it's not correct. But when I stand, I can see that. And I'm going to move that so that now I have that just a blades width apart and now I can cut it and I'll get an accurate cut. So if you are able to stand to cut um, those kinds of, of blocks and that, do that because this eighth of an inch or so, whatever this is, I think it's about an eighth of an inch, of plastic distorts how we view things, how we see it. Um, if we're sitting down, it's, it's from the angle that we're looking at the edge of that plastic. The other thing is you're, you're cutting and you're putting your ruler. What I find, um, because accuracy is going to be extremely important here um, in all of the blocks that we make, and it always is. I mean, accuracy in our quarter inches is wonderful. Um, it, and it makes for our quilts turning out the way we want we want them to. So what I have found with the the Quilter Select ruler is not only do they they stay put and um, they don't move when you're cutting, you have to really work at making them move. Is that their lines are very fine, and if I set that those black lines right at the edge of the line where I want to cut, 
that I will get an accurate quarter inch. And so whatever rulers that you have, I would practice just a, a moment and see where you actually need to lay that um, ruler, cut it, and then measure to make sure you really are getting a quarter inch cut. So in terms of, of cutting um, for that. Then, so the first thing that, that I'm going to do is I have made the top row and the second row just for the sake of time. So we're going to make um, the block that's going to go right here. So I have my three elements. I have my B. I have my... So I'm going to lay my, my B uh, this way. I'm going to lay my... Um, and I'm doing this upside. All right, so I have my, my B and C there, and this is where the D is going to go. And I, and I like to lay out my block because as you saw right there, I was having a, a moment of dysfunction in my brain. So I want to sew these two together, um, those two seams. So I'm going to bring this over and I'm going to be sewing along this side and I want to put it in my machine so I'm going to be dropping a pin to hold that in place because what I find with triangles is that they move they they do like to move on you um, the other thing you know if cutting discrepancy comes I line up my outside because if I have to do any trimming or there's a problem, um, I do that from the outside. So I'm going to flip it over to sew um, that seam so that I can start on the flat and I don't have that point to deal with. So I, I want to put a pin here and, and go straight in with your pin and then turn it to the side so it doesn't distort the fabric. And then on my machine, I have this Sew Steady mat, which, you know, also is helpful with the quarter inch seams because I have my, you know, the center line where the needle is going to go in. I have my quarter seam. And then um, there's this, this tape. Uh, that they sell in the in the store as well that I've extended it on on here for when I have big squares or big pieces and all of those things can be purchased online if you are so inclined and so I am sewing you know on that quarter inch and I just went off of it a little bit when I picked up my hand I put my fingers over here next to this so that the point doesn't move from that quarter inch line and I will get a quarter inch all the way to the end of my block. And I use a leader and an ender um, so this was my my leader so that I don't have those bird so that I don't have those bird nests on the back of my of my um, block so then pressing this I am going to be pressing to the dark side so I'm going to lay it down and sink my threads if you sew and you would feel your your seam you would you would feel that thread and so when I put the heat of the iron on there um, it sinks the thread into the fabric and you don't feel it as much now I don't really pull on this because as you as you know there's bias involved there so I simply hit the seam line with the edge of my iron so that um, I know that it's going to be nice and flat then I set my iron down and I get that very nicely um, flat seam across there and I'm going to cut my little bunny ear off of that and now this is going to be sewn to, to this particular one and again I am going to match this up because I want my corners to match and I'm going to drop a pin 
into the point here so that it stays right where I want it to be. And I'm gonna be sewing along this seam. So I wanna go back and make sure that this is all lined up. And I'm gonna drop a pin again, going straight down and then turning so that my fabrics don't, don't move on that. So then coming back, I'm gonna get that lined up with my quarter inch, both down here as well as up here. And sew that at that quarter inch seam line. And I'm gonna keep my hand out here, guiding it through so that I have, again, that quarter inch goes all the way to the end because sometimes our machines have a tendency to want to pull our threads to the left and to the right. And um, so they don't come out having that quarter inch all the way, um, that quarter inch all the way to the end. And we want the quarter inch to be the same all the way down. And so this time I'm going to set my seam and then I'm going to press it open. When I'm talking and sewing at the same time, um, I'm not always as good because I can't walk and chew gum either. All right, so now I have my block and I wanna make sure that I have it at three and a half inches because that's what it needs to be. And so I line that up at the three and the three and a half. And if everything is wonderful, my quarter inch hits at the point all the way down, I have a complete three and a half inch square so I really don't need to do any trimming I don't need to mark anything because nothing is really short and you don't know how excited I am that that actually came out pretty much correct on that so now I want to get that lined up the way it needs to be and I'm going to sew a um, single block of my corners on each side so again I flip this over and I want to sew on this side, I have my quarter inch lined up and my points on the point of, of my solid block, sticking my pin in there and now going back to And normally I, you know, I chain stitch. And so I would be chain stitching this block together, um, generally speaking. And that's what I did as I was doing um, those two. So now I have that sewn there. And because I have pressed, oh, and I apologize for that, and I have pressed these to the center because I'm looking at which way I can press it so I have the least amount of bulk. And so this one I am going to press outward. So again, I'm going to set my seam. I'm going to hit the side of that with my iron and then let it sit for a second. And I want no movement um, on that at whatsoever because that will distort my fabric and I personally do, do not use water in my iron uh, because it's very easy for me to get going on something and that water makes movement in the fabric before it um, completely dries and I will end up with distorted fabric, so I, I do not use the water. And many of you I know do, and you know whatever works for you so that you do not get distortion, um, that's entirely up to you, but I find that um, working without water um, serves my purposes um, very well because I never have to worry about distortion in my fabric. 
And so now I have my bottom row and again I am going to set my threads. I'm going to hit the side with my iron, let it sit, and now I'm going to sew these three um, together. And butting up seams, that wherever I have seams that come together, that's where I'm going to go first. And I push it right in there until it's locked in place. And now I pin a little differently than many do. Um, instead of two pins on either side, I will take my pin, push it straight down on the top right hand side, and then um, take it down just on the left of that other seam. That way I only have to use one pin, but more importantly, I can sew right up to that seam line before I need to pull my pin um, because it's at an angle and I have the space there before I would hit my pin. So um, again, I push that so that it locks in place. I take my pin top right hand side and I bring it back down just to the left of that. And then I go to my corners and I make sure that my corners um, you know, the, the thread seam line goes right in there. I'm going to drop my pin in and secure that and then go and line this one up. And if I have any um, easing that has to be done, that's where it's going to happen within here because I want to make sure that I have that lined up. So then I'm bringing that in and hopefully you could see that um, I actually took a stitch right into the and this is a good place to use um, I don't have my stiletto right here but a stiletto could work really well right here to help hold that um, piece down um, so that it goes under there And I just sewed over that pin and I will on occasion I do that but I'm really watching carefully um, that the pin um, that the needle is going to go well beyond that pin but you really shouldn't sew over pins and the reason being um, is that it can get caught down in the shaft and those shafts are real expensive to have fixed um, that's when I learned not to sew over pins very often but again when I'm talking and again so that there's not a ton of bulk um, I am going to press this towards uh, the uh, bottom so I again I'm hitting that seam line with the heat of the iron and then I'm letting it sit for a couple of seconds on the seam and there is my monochromatic um, Star of Hope block. And so hopefully that was really um, good for you. So, um, and you saw what you needed to. If not, ask the questions. And in just a moment, I'll go to those, those questions in the block. Then what I am going to be doing is I am going to be using on page 83, the shoe fly block. I am making a three inch out of all of these and I may make more than one out of the color scheme that we're using for the day. So I, I went with a green one here. Again, I found a very light pale green on the camera. It looks white. It could have been. I have my medium and I have my dark print and I'm going to use these shoe flies hopefully in a uh, the design of my quilt as some separation pieces or sashing or um, a design element within that. So I'm going to be using this, you know, this shoe fly block and I'm going to make a shoe fly block um, every time. And so sometimes they'll look different. This one, I made it straight shoe fly. Uh, we'll see what happens as we go along with how this block can change. I shared that with you when I moved values around last time. So right now I want to go to the 
Um, I know these sessions are a little bit longer than they usually are, but I want to um, answer any questions as much as I can while you're here. And so let me just kind of buzz through. Uh, Alabama had snow. Ooh, there's lots of snow, I see. Um, all right. How many fabrics would be advised to have available? Well, I have about, you know, as I'm looking at that very large pile over there, I can't help myself. I would say maybe, you know, 15 to 20 would be a good, it could be. Uh, the, the kit was a starter. I don't remember exactly how many fabrics were in there, but I've probably got, you know, 60 some fabrics laying out there and I certainly will not use them all, but they're there for whatever block that I'm working um, on at the time. And I see a couple of people. This is the first time that you've been here. I'm so glad you found us. Thank you for coming. And um, all right. And, you know, a couple of you said I couldn't see what you were doing, and I apologize for that. And um, Kitty mentioned a, a clapper to give you flatter seams. Um, yes, a clapper does give you very flat seams, and I have them. They're, my space is very small, and I'll use it sometimes um, for that. But I find that the, the heat of the iron works pretty well um, for that, is too, if you don't have a clapper. But that's... Um, and they do, um, Kristen has put up where you can order things from. And someone said a watercolor brush where they put uh, best press uh, as you press or something just on the seams. And that works really, you know, that works great too. Um, wetting only the bulky seams. And somebody asked, what book are you working from? It's the book that for this class, and it's called Quick and Easy Block Tool. And they have it in the store, but this is the what I'm taking all of the blocks that we'll be doing out of. So it's the Quick and Easy Block Tool, 110 quilt blocks um, in the five sizes. And how many weeks is this going to go on? Um, I think around 12 or so. It might We might add a couple of things. And Maria, I'm not completely sure what you're asking. If the monochromatic be the theme of our fabric choices for this week, yes. Because we wanted to learn a little bit about how to get a monochromatic quilt to look great and what that means. And... Um, how did I set up my machine with the flat area around it? It is a as a table that I ordered that goes with the um, the. I have a um, a horn table, and you can order a a table that goes around so it fits right into that hole. Will, will I be putting the green and blue blocks in the same quilt? Yes, I will be. And the pattern available? No, there is no pattern. You're going to be making that pattern. So that's one of the, the fun things that you get to look forward to. And how many blocks of these should we make? I'm, I'm asking for one. You, if you really like it and you want it in a different color, go for it. Uh, because you're going to be putting some, some of this um, together. Do I consider the pure color a medium value? It could be. It depends on which other fabrics I'm using uh, because it, that's relative. What's medium in one place could be dark in the other. And if you look at my block um, that's on the screen right now, that medium blue could be dark up against my light and I could have a different medium medium. Um, fabric in between those two. So it depends on what's next to it. All right. And how many of the small shoe fly blocks do we make? 
Uh, right now I've started with one, but there are probably going to be some designs that I'll say, I really like this, I'm so I'll make two or three with that. So I think it's right now it's up to you and when we get to the designing part we'll have a couple of weeks there and you may want to go back and make you know another block or something from one of those but i really thank you for for being here today and working through this and next week we're going to be working on analogous and we'll have a new block we will not be using the same blocks except for the shoe fly if you decide you want to do that that is just something that i am doing and showing you how we can get all of these fabric uh, fabric choices and our values into a particular block so make as many as you want but um, i'm right now i've made one so we'll we'll work on that and we'll see you next week for a new block and a new uh, theme for uh, which is a nogalus. And if I, I hope I'm saying that right. So we'll see you next time. Have a great week. Uh, go to bed early. Make sure you set your clocks back. All that good stuff for, for those of us here in the States um, for uh, daylight savings time. So blessings to all of you.